And we're back. This is the before and after for Columbus, directed by Colganada. I seriously swear to not believe I don't know who he is until today. I watched one of his uh, cuts for Sight and Sound. It looked amazing, and I will definitely check out this video SAS for sure because it's just been amazing. And yeah, it's just indie sort of super cuts now in the feature length, and it stars John Cho and Haley Lou Richardson. Haley is uh, the chick from Edge of 17 and Split. I mean, it's just kind of cool to see her doing sort of indie stuff. I mean, with her acting ability or what she's shown so far, I swear she could have been in anything and it would've been totally fine because she's totally fits the mold, so I'm glad she's like picking her project and stuff. John Cho, I mean, I'm seriously just here for John Cho. This is the Canadian premiere, so I haven't seen any of the trailers or anything, but when I found out it was John Cho and then the sort of the storyline intrigued me because it's about architecture and it's just about one guy who's sort of forced to be in Columbus, whereas the other girl is just, I'm being here so that I can forgive, like, like give up my dreams type of thing. So that's a really contrasting thing. So uh, definitely looking forward to just how things are going to go down and just like uh, the chemistry and all that stuff. So yeah, definitely looking forward to it. So this is before and this is after. So wow. Well, first off, let's get off with the grievances. The film next door was way too loud and the bass was carrying over into our film. There were moments where I swear I thought music is playing and I thought it's from a car inside the context of the movie I'm watching, but nope, it's just freaking next door. But with that done, holy smokes, really dug it. Lots of slow takes just mundane stuff to the end and I love that stuff it's just cutting it a little bit later than your Hollywood standard and I love it and just feeling that emptiness and just making that world feel so much more real and it really goes back to that sight and sound video that I watched where he compared two movies where they were cut by the original director and a American producer and it's just like wow just the lingering shots and just building that world. I mean, granted, the story is pretty simple. We have John Cho and his dad, the relationship falls out, he's in, um, dad's in the hospital, he doesn't really care, and then we have Casey and her and her mom. Mom's doing well, but it's like holding her back from achieving her dreams, and then Casey and John meets up, and it's just like them just chilling out, and I just love their chemistry. Like, Haley Lou Richardson? I think that's her last name. Seriously, great job. I mean, I'm so glad she picked this. It's just showing off her range. I mean, granted, Edge of 17 was sort of like this, but she was a supporting cast, and then in Split, she just played a damsel in distress, so I'm so glad that she picked this role to play, and it just pushes boundaries, and definitely, it's not a general audience film. There's a lot of mundane stuff. There's a lot of cooking. There's a lot of walking, and just shots of things to establish it, and to the point where establishment overkill, but I loved it, because it just really creates these sets that they keep revisiting, like her home, the hospital, the inn, the library, and it just makes these things, makes these places like feel real and they actually matter rather than let's cut here, let's cut there, and all that stuff. So I really enjoyed it. I mean, I have two more films to watch for fifth this year, and but I can say Columbus is my number one for now. I highly doubt the next two will sort of thrown it but I really enjoyed it I will definitely be on the lookout for the director's next thing I really hope people just watch it and just see what he's at and maybe just give him more things to do and John Cho holy smokes like just seeing him progress from American Pie to Harold and Kumar and then Star Trek into this I mean he has sort of like being the main character for that sitcom or TV show that he was with Karen Gillan it's like more acting chops from that but it's just more this time is like headlining this movie and it's just really great to see him stretch his legs and one cool thing I really appreciate was how they didn't translate the Korean phone dialogue. I mean, it's it's an interesting thing and I really wonder like why, why? I mean, Korean audiences will definitely get more of the story context, but at the same time, I don't really care about what he has to talk about. I mean, it doesn't really build towards the story. Sure, you probably get to know his father's conditions more or his job situation a bit more, but but it doesn't really add that much or take away. So I really enjoyed the fact that they didn't just translate it. And I think it always carries over that Casey doesn't understand Korean. So if they translate it, we as an audience will not see him through her eyes. And I love the cultural jabs. It's like, my name's Jim. Jim? No, with an N. 
like love that it's like oh Asians can speak English like you know what I mean I know what you mean but still like that stuff great stuff great time so yeah, overall really enjoyed it love the shots I can watch this forever really want to own this and just rewatch it too because seriously the movie next door really ruined this really good moment where it's like they're just having this really nice conversation and it's just really quiet which makes me realize that a lot of the films that I watched this year their soundtrack's really loud and just it builds the mood but here there's no real sound and it's just really atmospheric with the shots and just how the actors are portraying themselves and that's basically all the story so so yeah, I gotta, gotta get this on Blu-ray and watch it again by myself or with people just to really get into that atmosphere. I mean, I really hope, I, I'm gonna give feedback to Fifth as in like, you, you need to like screen your movies beside each other that are quiet. Cause seriously, that movie beside us, the bass totally ruined that moment. I, I seriously thought it was a car in the background during that scene making all those noise. And I was like, oh, that's a pretty cool effect, but nope, it's next door. So that's not a cool effect for me at all. Anyways, I enjoyed Columbus. Wait, hold on. I didn't even talk about the architecture. Like, as Tim always says, like, even if you don't care about the subject matter, if the director and the script and all that stuff can make you care because you didn't care going in and you cared coming out, that's a good thing. And really, I enjoyed, like, the whole architecture talk. Her list and just, like, the actual, actual talk about it. It's not just like, hey, this looks good, but rather, like, an actual architecture nerd talk and I really enjoy that so yeah overall it was a very decent exceptional film and I definitely recommend it for anyone that can catch this because it is it's great I think it's a lot harder for general audiences to watch this even at home because it's just gonna be like man this is really slow but it's not really slow slow which is like an interesting like perspective in a sense where like the camera angles changes throughout these moments and I think that keeps us fresh and sort of alive rather than let's just have this like long shot I mean there was like some cool long shots here and there but just like having changing perspectives of the rooms and the, the sets the locations and I really enjoyed that so definitely definitely recommend it anyway that's it sorry about the voice I'm getting sick I'm getting sick and I still have two more movies to go Thanksgiving is tomorrow so be thankful for everything so that's it this is the before and after for Columbus later